Hello, it's Technology Central here, and welcome to our tutorial, which is a complete guide to using Google Slides. We have several other videos on Google Slides, which will go into slightly more detail than this tutorial. So go and check them out once you've finished here. But let's get started. First, we need to navigate to Google Slides. To do that, from the Google homepage, come to the nine dots on the right hand side. Click on them and then scroll down until you find Slides. Choose Slides. You're now on the Google Slides homepage. If you've been working on a presentation previously, you can see them here. Simply click on them to open the presentation. Otherwise, create a new presentation. You can either use one of these templates or create a blank presentation. We're going to use a blank presentation in this tutorial. We've now got our new presentation. Changes you make to your presentation are saved automatically. All your presentations are saved to the cloud. To name your presentation, come to the top left hand side where it says Untitled Presentation. Click on it and now choose a name. I'm going to call my presentation my presentation. When you're done, simply press enter or click away. We can now see that our presentation has been saved to the cloud with the name My Presentation. If you want to import slides that you've created elsewhere, come to File and then choose Import Slides. Here you can either import slides from a previous presentation or you can upload them. This will also let you upload slides from other presentation software, such as PowerPoint. If you want to download your presentation, come to File, Download, then choose the format you want to download your presentation in. Common choices will be PowerPoint format or Open Document format. You also have the option to publish your slides to the web. This creates a web-based version of your presentation which you can share with other people, allowing them to view your presentation, but not edit it. Next, we're going to cover the different parts of the screen that you can see. Here at the top, we have the menu bar. This has a series of menus, each of which contains several different options. Underneath, you have the toolbar. These are the different tools that you have available to you at the moment. As you select different items in your presentation, for example, text or images, different options will appear within the toolbar, which you can use to make changes to it. We'll cover most of them later in this tutorial. Now let's look at how we can add, rearrange and delete slides in your presentation. To add a new slide, click on the plus button on the far left hand side of the toolbar. This has created a new slide. As you can see, a template has already been applied to this slide. If you want to add a new slide using a different template, click the drop down arrow next to the plus button. And then choose the template you want to use. For example, a blank slide. To rearrange the slides in your presentation, simply click on a chosen slide and drag it into the place you want. For example, I've now moved this blank slide to be the second slide in our presentation. To delete a slide, select the slide you want to delete, right click, and then choose delete. And as you can see, we've now deleted that slide. Now let's add some content to your slides. To add a text box, choose the text box option here in the toolbar. Then, Hold down your mouse and drag to create the text box at the desired size. Now we can enter our text. As we said previously, there are now several options that have appeared in our toolbar. These are all to allow you to edit the text. Let's look at some of the common options. If we select our text, we can then change the font, as so. Change the size of our text here. Make our text bold, italic, or underlined using these three options. 
as with most text editors. You can also change the text color by choosing a color here. We can also insert a hyperlink with our text. We'll come back to them later on in this tutorial. We can align our text. For example, we can align it to the center of our text box. We can choose to use bullet points or numbered lists for our text. And there are several other options, including animation, which we'll come back to later in this tutorial. To insert an image, come to the image icon and click on it. Now choose where you want to upload your image from. It can be from the computer. You can search the web for a suitable image. You can use an image that you have saved to Google Drive or Google Photos. You can use a URL to an image, or you can take a new image using a camera on your device. For this tutorial, we're going to insert an image from Google Drive. Here we have our logo. Select it and then click Insert. And as we can see, the image has now been inserted into our presentation. You can resize the image by clicking on these blue squares and dragging to your chosen size and move the image by selecting the image and dragging it to your chosen position, as so. We can also see some other options that have appeared in the toolbar. These let us crop the image, like so. If you want to change the image back to its original format, you can reset the image by clicking the Reset Image option. For more options, click the Format options, and a pane will appear on the right-hand side with all of the different image options. We can also add shapes to our presentation. We do that by clicking on the Shapes option. Choose your shape, and then click and drag to create it. Again, you can add text and format it in the way we saw previously. You can change the color of your shape here with the fill color. You can then change the color, thickness, and style of the border of the shape using these options. Again, you can also add animations, which we'll look at later in this tutorial. Now let's look at the content we can add to our slides that represents data. I'm going to clear up our slide and then come to insert and choose table. I'm now going to choose the size of the table I want. I'm going to have a five by five table. Click there to insert our table. We can change the height and width of our table as so. We have many of the same formatting options as we had for shapes. To delete the table, simply select it and click delete. To insert a chart, come to insert, come down to chart and choose the chart type. You can also insert a chart that you have created in Google Sheets. If you don't know how to do that, go and watch our tutorial on how to create a graph in Google Sheets. For this tutorial, let's insert a bar graph. We now have a default bar graph created. We can resize it and reposition it in the same way as we did for images. Again, there are several options available. An important option is how to select the data used to create a graph. To do that, come to this link and drop down arrow button and then click open source. Here, you have now been redirected to a Google Sheet, which contains the data and graph that you're using. Make the changes here, like you would in Google Sheets, to make the changes to the graph in your presentation. When you're done, simply navigate back to Google Slides. Next, let's look at how we can use Slide Masters. Slide Masters is a way of applying common elements across all of your slides. It also allows you to create new templates that you can use when creating your slides. To view the slide master, come up to view and then click master. We're now in our slide master view. At the top is our master slide. This is a default slide, which all other layouts will inherit from. If we make a change to our master slide, for example, I'm going to insert our logo again. This will now appear 
on all slides. I can rearrange this as so. As we can see on the far left hand side, both of the slides in our presentation now have our logo in the top right hand corner. If you want to add something which appears on all slides which use a particular layout, select the existing layout, then add that common element. In this example, I'm adding a text box to all blank slides, and that text box is going to say my title. When you're done editing your master slides, click this X to close out of the master slide view. We can now see our presentation. For this first slide, we can see our logo. And for the second slide, which was created using the blank slide layout, we can see our logo and the extra text. These items can't be moved or dragged around in our presentation. As you can see, they can't be selected. To create a new layout, come back to view and click master. Then come to the plus button and click it. This now creates a new layout. On this layout, we're going to keep our logo because this is on the top level master slide. And I'm also going to add a shape. Let's add one of these arrows. To name our layout, come to the rename option here, click it and name it something appropriate. For example, I'm going to call this one arrow layout and then click OK. When we're done creating new layouts, close out of the slide master view like we did previously. Now we can add a new slide using our custom layout. We add this new slide in the same way as we added our slides previously. So come to the drop down arrow next to the plus sign and now select arrow layout. And we've created a slide which is using that layout. Next, let's look at animation. I'm going to insert a shape. Let's make it a circle. I now want to animate this shape. Come to the animate option when you have the shape selected. Select the animation you want to use from this drop down list. I'm going to make our shape fly in from the top. I want this to happen after the previous animation which will be starting the presentation. If we're animating text, you can choose to do it by paragraph or by word. Adjust the speed of the animation as so. To preview the animation, click play. As we can see, our slide presentation starts and then the shape flew in slowly from the top. When the preview is done, click stop. You can apply multiple animations to the same object. To add a second animation, simply click Add Animation. This second animation will happen after the first animation has finished. For example, I'm then going to go with Fly Out to Bottom and make this fast. Again, we can preview this animation by clicking Play. Our slideshow starts, our shape slides in slowly, and then flies out to the bottom fast. Click stop to end the preview. We can reorder our animations if we choose. Minimize both animations and then drag them to change their ordering. And again, we can preview the animations by clicking play. This time, the animations have happened in the opposite order. We can also apply transitions between different slides. To do that, come to the transition option in our toolbar. Here we select the slide transition. This is on the same page as the object animations. By default, this is none. I'm going to choose cube. I'm going to make the transition fast and I'm going to apply that to all slides. Now that we've got our presentation created, let's look at how we can present it. I'm going to close this pane and come to present in the very top right hand side of our screen. Here we have our first slide playing. And now simply click to progress through the slides. As you can see, we can see our transition in effect there. 
when you reach the end of your presentation, click Escape to leave the presentation. Next, let's look at hyperlinks. Hyperlinks allow you to either navigate to external websites or jump between slides within your presentation. Let's hyperlink our text, my text. Select the text and then come to insert a link. You can either paste a link to an external website, insert a link to this presentation, or choose the slides in your presentation. For example, I can choose to link to the next slide. Then click apply and we've created our link. Now, if we go into present mode, so start the presentation, then simply clicking on the link will progress us to the next slide. Again, press escape to leave presentation mode. The same method can be used to hyperlink objects. If I come here and select our circle, again come to link, and then either insert or paste the link, or select the slide in our presentation. For example, I'm going to link to slide 3 and click apply. Again, coming into present mode and clicking on our circle now jumps us to the third slide. Google Slides works best if you're working on the cloud. This lets you collaborate with others. To collaborate with others, you'll need to share your presentation with them and give them the permission to do so. To do this, come up to the share option in the top right hand side. Here, enter the email address of people you want to invite to your presentation. Alternatively, you can create a link which allows anyone with the link to edit your presentation. To do that, click change to anyone with the link. By default, you have to have added someone to your presentation for them to be able to edit it. Here, you can select the permission. They can either be a viewer, a commenter, or an editor. Then simply copy the link and send it to them. Once you've chosen your permissions, click done. For a more detailed tutorial on how to share your presentation with others, go and watch our Getting Started with Google Slides tutorial. There'll be a link in the description. That's everything we wanted to show you in this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you have, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. For more detailed tutorials on Google Slides, go and check out our Google Slides tutorial series. But for now, thanks for watching and goodbye.